Hi. Today we're going to go through a simple debugging session showing how we pinpoint a deep watch that's causing an app performance problem in an AngularJS app. I came up with this idea after having to help two different clients with this exact same problem literally in the last couple of weeks. I'm pretty sure this is a problem that a lot of teams face and would like some help with. I have a simple project here. Before we begin, I'll stress that the example project itself is contrived, of course. I can show you real client code with tens of thousands of lines of code. And so things here you might look at and say, I'll never do this in a simple app. But trust me, you'll do similar things when, when your app gets complicated enough. So back to our example. We have a simple list here. And let me just scroll through a bit for you to see that scrolling isn't really smooth. Okay, I'm trying to scroll as fast as I can, and yet, as you can see, things jump and lag. Usually when I see this kind of performance issues, it tells me that the digest cycle is most likely doing too much work in an Angular app. But whenever doing optimization, you should always follow the numbers. You shouldn't be working on a hunch. You should know exactly what you're changing and whether it's really making the impact you think it will make. To do that, first of all, my go-to tool in these situations is to whip up ng-stats. If you don't know it, you can Google it. But basically, it's a little snippet that you can drop in your console and it shows you how many watches you have in your app and how long the digest cycles are taken. I already have it set up in my Chrome's source snippets, which I really recommend since I use it quite a lot. Right from the get-go, you can see we have 16,000 watches, which I know sounds a lot, but you'll see eventually after we do our fix that we have the same number of watches and things are way faster. The real problem here is you can see all the digests that are being invoked and that on average I think a digest is taking 120 to 140 milliseconds here. That's a huge number for digests, okay? Once your digests take more than a couple dozen milliseconds at max, you're going to have real bad performance issues, which is what we're seeing here. You can see and just stats is coloring all in red, telling us things are really bad. And yeah, thanks, we know. This helps us make sure that indeed the problem seems to be the digest, but how are we gonna pinpoint our source code, the exact line that's causing this? Okay. What I usually do now, let's just first refresh to get rid of and stats. What I usually do right now is whip up the developer tools in Chrome go to the Profiles tab and start a quick profiling session, okay? Just need to do a JavaScript CPU profile, start it, let it run for a few seconds, stop it, and let's see. You see all these peaks, and each little peak says that some work is being done. The whole recording is about I think five and a half seconds. And if we we'll zoom in on one of these to see what's happening, you can see that essentially all the work in this peak is the digest. And I can assure you without even checking that that's the case everywhere here. Hovering on the digest shows us that the aggregated total time of the digest is almost four seconds out of our five and a half seconds recording. So as you can see, the digest is what's going on here. But that's not helpful. We already have the feeling we want to know what in our code is causing digest to take so long. The next step is to look below the digest. And you can see that it's calling a lot, a lot of equals. This equals is angular.equals. You might know it as the 
useful function Angular provides you to do a deep comparison of two objects and make sure that they're the same. Every time when you see a digest calling angular.equals, you can be sure that it's because you have a deep watch. Okay, let's recap. A usual watch in Angular is, of course, if you do scope watch and some expression and the function to run whenever it changes. When you have bindings in your template, they're also, of course, watches. When you have a parent component, pass a binding to a child component, there's also a binding between them. But a deep watch is when you use scope watch with an expression, a callback function, and the third parameter being true, which tells Angular to deeply compare whatever expression evaluates as. A lot of people do this, for example, when you have a big model object that gets changed all through your app somewhere, you're not even sure where sometimes, and you want to make sure to have some logic happen whenever it changes. This is a problem with mutability. If expression evaluated to an immutable object, you would never need to do a deep watch. But Unfortunately, a lot of AngularJS apps work with mutability and changing objects, which means deep watches are quite common. So now, using our profile, we know that the digest is basically spending all of its time. You can see the aggregated time for equals being basically the aggregated time for digest. So we know the deep watches are the problem. Next. How are we going to know which deep watch is causing the problem? I want to see the exact source code line that I need to change. I don't know if you can hear the ice cream truck, but if you can, I'm sorry. Anyway, back on track. Where is the deep watch happening? If you have a 40 lines app, it's pretty simple. Okay, it's right here. But assuming, like I had in like at my clients, a real app, tens of thousands of lines, what you're gonna do? You can try going through every dollar watch and see if it has deferred parameter being set to true. If your app is small enough, it just won't work and you'll be dandy. But in this case, that wasn't that simple and I had to do some deeper digging. Um, my trick here is a bit of a hack, but I can tell you it's been helping me for years now. So when push comes to shove, you sometimes have to do this and find the exact problematic source line. What is it? Okay, let's open up the AngularJS file. It's usually under your node models directory or your bar components directory or whatever. Under it, I go and find the dollar digest function and dip in it, I go here. You see this? This is the exact loop that goes over every watcher and in it compares whatever watch expression you have. The line here says if the watch has dot eq equals, which means it's a deep watch, then use angular equals. This is the culprit. What I want to know is which expression here is happening, so I'll be able to find it in my code. There's no easier way to get this other than change Angular a bit. So yes, this is a hack. I don't recommend doing it often, but when you have to, just do it and make sure to afterwards delete whatever node or bar or whatever you have and do npm install or bar install again so everything is clean and you make sure that you don't have your leftovers from changing the code. But what I do now usually is this. Right here, I check if the watch is a deep watch. And if it is, I make sure to print it. Just like so. And I print watch.exp, short for expression, which is the first parameter you provide the watch. And so you, you can see what is being deeply watched. 
but I warn you ahead, in most projects, just doing this is going to print so many lines in your console that the dev tools will just stop functioning. So what I usually do is make sure to only print it once per unique watch. It helps. So let's make sure to only print if the watch hasn't been printed already and set it to true afterwards. Okay, I'm just adding another property to the watch. As I said, it's a hack, but it works. We save, let's go back here, refresh. Okay, things still work. Let's go to the console. And you can see all of our prints, and they all come back to the single watch on this dot all. Now, if we go to our code, and search for this dot all, you can see this dip watch. Nice. It's a lot easier to find the source code line when you have the exact watch expression. And of course, we need to get rid of this true. You can, as a workaround, sometimes say, okay, I don't need to look at this whole big object. Maybe I can just deeply watch something that food at bar which is a lot smaller and so the watch will be faster maybe maybe uh, you can just say i don't need this dip watch at all uh, what i usually recommend is to change your code to use one-way data flow and so whenever this at all needs to be changed you don't change it mutably you do not edit the actual object itself you create a new instance of it, a new copy, change whatever is needed inside that new copy, and then change this at all to point at a different object. That means that you can use a simple shallow watch instead of a deep watch, and everything will then be working great. Let's say we did it here in our contrived example, so now we are safe after removing our deep watch and changing it to a shallow watch. I'll just say again, we're not removing the watch at all, we're just changing it to be faster. And now, once we refresh, see how much faster things are. Okay, that's before and now. Zoom! This is how things would scroll. And let's make sure so you, you'll see I'm not just saying crap. We run entry stats again, and you see we have the same exact number of watches, but our digits are now like two milliseconds, which is not a problem at all. Great. I hope this helps you, and I hope you will be able to make your apps speedy as well. If you like this, please go to my site and subscribe to my newsletter. They have lots of good stuff, just like this, and I promise you to help you make your apps better. Cheers!